I'd like to tell you some testimonies and share what this looks like in action. Would that be all right? And then we'll pray, okay? And there'll be lots of healing and all that good stuff because Jesus is powerful and he loves us so much. He does. So I was flying actually to South Africa. Awesome country, man. Wow. But I'm on my way there. And so I, I got my plane and really long flight. Have a, have a stopover and then down to South Africa and I'm in Johannesburg. So in Johannesburg, I'm like waiting for my flight and my flight's taking a while and I've got to go to my next stop in Durban. And so it's being held up and I don't know why I'm standing in line and it doesn't say any mechanical issues, but it's an hour and then another half hour. And then finally we get on the flight. So we get there and I'm sitting in my seat and, and I get an aisle seat because I drink like tons of water and I don't like to ask the people to get up. So I ask for aisle seat. <laughs> so I have to get up a lot because it's good to drink lots of water. So there's a guy that's coming down the aisle. When he gets on the plane, everybody knows this dude. They're like, oh, hey. Like I'm talking like he comes into the room and everybody's countenance changes. So I'm like, this guy's important. Like what's the deal? Like he's really important. So he comes and he's supposed to sit right beside me in that chair. He comes over and he comes to me and he turns around and walks up to the airline attendant. So I'd like a different seat. If you'd have just asked me, I'd have moved in. So I'd like a different seat. She goes, oh, no problem, sir. So they actually like got him another seat, but it was right across the aisle from me. So he's right next to me. So he sits down. He's a business guy. And I'm like, hey, man, how you doing? He's like, I'm, I'm, doing, I'm doing fine. Thank you. And he's ignoring me. And that's okay. I'm good with that. I'm not hurt or offended. Well, I'm not upset. I love him. So he's talking to the guy next to him. And then another lady's talking to him. Everybody knows him. I'm like, man, everybody knows you. I want to know you. Who are you? He's, oh, I'm just a businessman. They know me because I'm in the news and uh, they write bad things about me. I'm like, wow, man. Well, well what do you do? He goes, I just, I'm just a businessman. What do you do? I said, I'm, about, I'm a businessman too. <laughs> so I just tell him, he goes, well, what do you mean? I said, well, I'm about my father's business. He's like, oh, okay. Well, who's your father? I said, I'm glad you asked. I said, his name is God. Oh, okay. I'm Hindu. I don't believe like you do. I said, that's okay. He goes, what's your story? I said, I'm glad you asked. So I share my testimony with this guy. His jaw drops. He's like, wow, how did you get into this country? You know, because, you know, because that was horrible, man. I said, oh, I said, I have fun in customs with those guys. I, I just share the gospel. And the more you detain me, the more Jesus that's coming out. I promise. I promise. He diffuses the fragrance of the knowledge of him everywhere I go. It doesn't matter where I'm at. Pff, he's coming out, man. Really. So I'm talking to him and I said, hey, man, you have a problem with your heart. He goes, no, 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 I'm okay. I go, no, 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 you're not okay. He goes, yes, I, yes, yes, I am. Okay, we're done. I'm like, all right. So he starts talking to the other guy and then he talks to me again and I share with them, and the airline attendant comes by, and I said, hey, I said, you have a problem in your neck and your shoulder? God gave me a word of knowledge. She goes, yes, I do. I said, can I pray for you? Oh, of course. So I prayed for her, Jesus. Wow, thank you. Who are you? I said, I'm just a businessman. <laughs> so this guy looks at me, and he's like, wow, okay. So we land. He goes, I actually do have a problem with my heart. Will you pray for me? I said, of course I will, man. So come on, let's pray. Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus. I'm not like, oh, Lord Jesus, on the front. <laughs> you don't have to. It's not about that, man. It's about him. <laughs> Jesus. Look at her. So I prayed for him. He goes, my chest got very warm. He goes, you will do me a favor. I said, okay. He goes, when we get off the plane, I have an assistant that's meeting me. He will carry your bag. I said, no, I'm okay. He goes, no, no, no. You must let him carry your bag. I'm like, all right, okay. It's just a little tiny bag, man. So I don't, it doesn't matter. Please. I go, okay. You will walk with me and we will talk. I'm like, okay. So we get off the plane. We walk down the, we walk down the aisle or the jet bridge. This guy gets my bag. He's here. Meet my friend. He's calling me his friend now. Meet my friend. He's an amazing man. He's, he's amazing. He, wow. We get down to the baggage claim. I looked at the guy and I said, hey, 
I said, you used to play rugby and you wanted to go pro, but you tore your ACL and you've blamed God for it. What's the deal, man? Imagine that. See, my friend is Hindu. He goes, it's true, isn't it? The guy goes, yes. He goes, let him pray for you. <laughs> Serious. So, right. So he prayed for him and Jesus restores his knee completely right there. Completely. See, he was a Christian, but he was very, very, very quiet about it. But God is whew, inspiring his heart to be very loud about it now. And he's his assistant. This is awesome, right? So then he meets the pastor and the pastor's like, oh, hey, he knows who he is. He goes, hey, sir, how you doing? He goes, oh, I'm doing very well. Is this your friend? He said, yes, he is my friend. We were on the plane and he knew about my heart and this and that. He goes, I want him to pray for my son. He goes, oh, okay, well, why don't you bring him by the church? He goes, well, can I come pick him up and, and meet my son? And I'm like, you know it's a long flight, right? South Africa from, from where I, east coast of America. It's like, woo, way forever. So I'm like, yeah, let's do it. Let's like plan it like, and we'll set it up. So he's like, okay, you take my number. You make sure. He goes, I want your number because I will call you and I, I need to have it. So he calls and we set it up. So they take me and they drop me off at this, at this restaurant to meet his son. So we walk in and he's not there. He's, he's late for the meeting. So I just minister to every waiter and waitress that I can. Why? Because that's what we do. Because that's who we are. We are people that can't get enough of his love. And we can't afford to hold it back from other people that don't know it. Because we shine as lights. And we're supposed to saturate people around us. It's powerful. So waiter after waiter is being healed. And people are coming to Jesus. And then he comes in. He goes, sir, he goes, come on. And all the waiters are around me. I'm like, come on. Where do you want to sit? He goes, let's go over here. And so we sit down. And we're talking. And he's like, you know, he goes, my son, he goes, he suffers from schizophrenia and he has this. And I said, well, God will touch him. He's like, well, he's on his way, but he's going to be a little bit late today. So we're sitting there talking and he looks beside us and he goes, we have to move. I said, why? He goes, because that's the reporter that writes bad news about me. He's sitting right beside us. I'm like, no way. <laughs> this is like the opportunity of a lifetime. Why? Because they don't get along. And my job is to reconcile them. So I'm just there, and we get up, and I said, hey, how you doing, man? He's like, okay. He's, uh, my friend's like, okay, let's get away. So I said, hey, man. I said, do you have a problem in your back, on the right side of your back? He goes, yes, I do. I said, are you a Christian? He goes, yes, I am. I said, awesome. I said, I'm going to pray for you, and Jesus is going to heal you. He goes, okay. So I pray for this reporter, and God restores his whole body. It, I mean, it's powerful. I said, this guy right here, he's a good guy. He goes, yes, yes, he is a good guy. Now, you know, I turn around and my friend is talking to a lady who's crying, who has a neck brace on in the restaurant. She's like, oh, come here to get medicine. I can't stop. I have a disease called dystonia and my body is crippled and I can't. There's no help for it. It's just medicine. He says, you wait. My friend from America will be right here. You just wait right here. So I walk over to the table. And I told her, asked her if she was a Christian. She loved Jesus. She's just sick, hurting. I said, come on, let's pray right now. So we prayed. She took her neck brace off. She's moving her head all around, completely gone. All the pain, every symptom from her body. In front of my friend. And my Hindu friend is like, yes. All from an encounter on an airplane. One thing after another. Boom, boom, boom. Boom. We are to be a freight train for the kingdom of heaven. We are to crush hell everywhere we go. It doesn't matter who you are. If you're a Christian, you're in. If you got the same Holy Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead in you, you're in. It's yours. He is ours and we are His. We are representatives of that. And Christ in us is the hope of glory. But Christ coming out of us is the manifestation of that glory. Don't keep Him inside. He's supposed to flow out of you like a river. Don't keep him in like a lake with no outlet. See, he's a fountain. You give out of overflow. Boom. God keeps pouring in you. But know who you are and whose you are. So we're sitting there. And it, we're having an amazing time. We sit at the table. His son walks in. He goes, here's my son. Pray for him. I looked at him and I said, sir, I will not pray for your son unless I can share my gospel. Now they're Hindus. He goes, just whatever, just, just go ahead. 
He wants me to pray for his boy. He wants his son healed. But his son needs to know who Jesus is. So I shared the gospel. And I watched his schizophrenic son. Bipolar and schizophrenia. I watched it scream out of his eyes. And his son got born again at the table right there. And I said, man, that's awesome. God loves you so much. And the guy, the man looks at me and he goes, um, I, I need to talk to you. I said, okay. I said, this is his son. He goes, for the last 11 years, I've not found peace. I've, my peace has just, just gone. I, I don't know where to find it. I said, today you're finding it. Because the kingdom of heaven has come close to you right now. It's right here. It's right now. He looks at me and he goes, what? Well, well, what is it? And I shared Jesus with him. And I said, you must be born again. You must have my king. He is the prince of peace. He is the king of glory. He paid a price to set you free from you. Right now. He said, I must have your Jesus. And this Hindu businessman that everybody knows got radically saved right there in the restaurant. man. The next day, he calls my phone. He calls my phone. He's like, I am coming to pick you up right now. <laughs> now he knows I got to fly out like later on in the afternoon. But I told him we have some free time tomorrow morning if he wants to talk. He goes, I must bring you to my family and you must share this with my family. So he takes me into this gated, amazing Taj Mahal house. And I go in there and I share the gospel with this very strong Hindu family. And they get born again. We have the privilege right now of representing Jesus in this world. We can represent Him. We have the authority of heaven standing behind us. Christianity is not a bummer. It is amazing. Amazing. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. We came up with a website, it's called Lifestyle Christianity. We have our newsletter that's gonna go out. You can sign up for our email list. We also have testimonies on there, event schedule, all that stuff. It'll be in